Right, here's the uh, the shutter assembly. Um, eventually, we've got it out. And um, looking at it now, I'm starting to wonder whether I've wasted my time because um, this is the, the, the stiff shaft that we talked about at the start. If I press back the claw here, this frees up. So it looks like to me it's the pressure of the claw on the back of the shutter which causes the claw to go up and down in and out that is causing the stiffness and if that's the case maybe it's meant to be like that and uh, the reason it's uh, not going at a constant speed lies elsewhere here's the spring which uh, operates the shutter um, there's no screws I can see there and it looks uh, as we can see if we press the shutter in and out again here there's no way of adjusting the tension in that in that spring um, however what we'll do is we'll take this shutter off and just have a look and see if the greasing is is any sort of issue um, And if there's anything we can do about it, about the stiffness, which I'm starting to doubt. And then that's come loose. Oh, here we go. Okay, there's the the track that the that causes the shutter movement. And here's the shutter. And there's the nylon nylon part that goes in the track then what do we do with that and now we've got that out and this indeed is pretty free not quite as free as one would wish though we'll see so I'm going to mess about with this and I'll let you know what my conclusions are I've taken the uh the shutter assembly to pieces a little bit further. First of all, I've actually taken the claw off. Um, it's got two uh, two screws uh, which go into into here. Uh, there's a little spring as well which uh, fits between the uh, the underside of the claw here and a small. Uh, nipple in there it's easy to uh, put back on but you've got to be careful you don't don't lose it I've loosened these uh, this collar here and also the the worm gear here in the hope I could get the shaft out but there's a circlet there so it, it won't go either way and I don't think I need to I managed to get some oil in here and and in here um, so I think what I'm going to do is reassemble it. What is pretty obvious, however, is that this bearing here, if I press that down, it uh, it uh, inhibits the, the shaft. So I think when it comes to putting this clip back, here it is, um, it's going to have to have a, a, a washer on it. So it just holds the bearing in place, uh, but doesn't exert any pressure. That's something we can easily arrange. Uh, everything else, uh, the, the shaft does in fact, without the shutter and claw, does in fact seem to have be uh, freer still with the oil I've put on. Uh, so with a little additional grease on the claw mechanism, when we get it back in together, I'm hoping that things are going to be okay. I've put the, the shutter mechanism back um, without the, uh, the, the, the sprockets. Um, I've just pushed the thing back in and screwed it down with the three screws. 
buster screw here. Uh, this screw incidentally holds a spring clip which puts pressure on this which is the frame adjustment. When you turn the knob on the other side it moves this in and out and hence moves the whole shutter thing up and down the claw mechanism up and down. A couple of things to note when putting this back the shutter uh, the shutter's position on, on this shaft is adjustable, it depends where you screw that collar in. Um, there's no set position which is unfortunate because as you push this in uh, two things happen. First of all, the further it goes this way the more pressure is on it from the spring of the claw. Uh, but secondly, the whole claw motion, uh, the aggregate position where it goes backwards and forwards and up and down is pushed along the shaft. Um, uh, as, as you move the shutter further this way. So you have to ensure that this is sufficiently far in so that the claw sticks out far enough on the other side into the gate to engage the film. If you, if you have this too far out then the claw will, will not, uh, not reach the film. So that's a matter of adjustment. You can also adjust the angle here which I guess is, I guess it, I haven't tried this yet with the film running through it because I haven't had the thing back together yet, but I guess it's the same as adjusting the framing. Uh, there's, a, there's a pivot here, and then these two screws which hold the claw in place, uh, if you loosen the top one, the bottom one's on a slot, so you can adjust the thing like that. So uh, a little bit of uh, care will be required uh, when... Uh, uh, finalising its position to ensure that the film is correctly uh, um, treated. Uh, I'm going to switch this on now so you can see it running. Uh, I put uh, the brackets back for all of the bearings. I was going to leave this one off uh, because there's no doubt that putting pressure on that bearing uh, adds resistance to, to this. Um, but it turns out that if you do that, when you put this nylon tube back in, it presses on here. Uh, this goes wonky and out of true. Um, so you have to, in fact, secure that bearing as well. So I've secured all three now. Uh, let me just switch it on. Uh, unfortunately, this projector um, doesn't have an uh, on-off switch, which is slightly annoying. As soon as you plug it in... The motor goes, as you can hear. There it is, playing around. Uh, squeaking a bit, shouldn't be, I foiled it. Um, you can just see, well we'll just switch it on, you can see what's going on here. Uh, switch it on forward. And that's running really quite nicely. Um, switch it on backwards, it was, it was certainly sticking on backwards before. And again that seems to run quite nicely. And. Uh, you can see here the speed adjustment. If I uh, adjust the speed, uh, that's currently at uh, the fastest position, which is 24. Adjust it downwards, and that's 18. So hopefully that's okay. What we're going to do now is um, put back the uh, the sprockets and then very carefully try a, a spare piece of film in there uh, advancing the, uh, the gate, the claw, using the manual adjustment here um, to make sure that it's engaging properly before we um, power, the, power the thing up with the film. Everything's now uh, reassembled, the um, sprockets are back in um, the transformers back on and uh, we've adjusted things so it, it runs okay. Um, I've had to, to adjust this shutter uh, to get the claw position correct. I mentioned that earlier on. It's very important to get it right. I had to push it further in than it was when I first assembled um, this and as a consequence this, the shaft is now actually quite stiff again. Having said that, it seems to run very nicely, much, much better than it did before, so hopefully the whole exercise has indeed been worthwhile. And if you do it with your projector, then uh, 
um, hopefully it will help with that too. Uh, a final word about this shutter. Uh, you really do have to position this in this direction very accurately indeed to get the claw position correct with respect to the film and as far as I can see the only way you can do that is to adjust this collar. There is no fine adjustment screw anywhere that you can use uh, and once you loosen this collar um, then the shutter can be pushed up uh, in either direction along the shaft and therefore fine adjustment is, is, uh, is virtually impossible. There's a lot of trial and error involved. If it's too far out uh, you have to try it with small film. If, if it's too far out the claw won't, uh, won't engage the film at all. When you run the film through, of course, the sprockets will push it through the gate, but it will go continuously through the gate. It won't, won't be pulled down by the claw, so uh, uh, you won't see anything on the screen apart from a blur. If you push it too far in, then quite literally you tear your film to shreds. Uh, the sprockets will get torn. So whatever you do, don't test this with anything that's of value. You need some old leader and you need to test it by uh, using the manual feed first and when you think you've got it right then you'll have to bite the bullet and turn the motor on and keep your fingers crossed uh, a lot of trial and error involved but eventually we did get it right and it seems to work well with both standard 8 and super 8 so I'm going to put the back uh, back on and we'll turn it around and uh, uh, just give it a, a run to finish off this um, this video session. Here we go. This is a Super 8. Super 8 film. Adjust the frame a bit. Perhaps can't see that at the moment. I'll just zoom in. As you can see, the projector is running smoothly. You can hear that clatter clatter, which means the claws engaging. And of course, since the film is visible as a film, then it's also proof that things are okay. And uh, I haven't bothered to try and adjust the speed here on the projector to avoid any flicker um, strobing. You can just see a bit of it there on the video camera. Um, that, uh, that's a different project altogether. So, there we go. If you attempt this with your own projector, then the very best of luck and I hope this video has been of some, some help.